Hi there, Bryce Foster here, and today I wanted to go over a quick video showing some techniques and some demonstrative examples of how to use SDR console along with the FM list logging tool to quickly log FMDX. And today I'm going to use an example of an IQ recording or a recording of the FM band or a segment of the FM band that was recorded with my SDR, which is an SDR play device over an eight megahertz swath of the band. I picked a day in July of 2021 that I had not logged yet for the sake of this demonstration. And I am using SDR console as the SDR software along with SDR consoles uh, data analyzer feature. So you'll see this window pulled up on the right side of my screen. I'm about to move that to another window so you might not see it live, but you will see my mouse magically clicking around as I click through this visual scope of this 12 minute IQ file. So each of these vertical lines represents radio signals. You'll see the real solid ones are my locals here. And you can see as I hover my mouse, it shows what time is represented on this data analyzer feature. And you'll see this um, from top to bottom represents about a 10 minute time period here. So this is a great way to quickly visualize what the band looked like during this IQ file recording. So again, I'm gonna pull this off and I'm going to pull in the FM list tool. So if you're signed up for FM list, this should look familiar. This is the my FM section where you do the logging. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the audio on here and I'll just begin logging on a frequency down here. I'll go for about 10 minutes and share some techniques that I use to quickly log using FM list. So I'm here on 100.7. And you can see some RDS has already popped up here in SDR console. If you're not familiar with some of these basic concepts, I have been thinking about explaining them in a different video segment, but today I'm just assuming that everyone is familiar with some of the basic concepts of SDRs and FMDXing in general. So I pulled up 100.7 and by pushing it and clicking it in here and hitting enter, and you'll see just about everything in eSkip range on 100.7 has popped up here in the FM list window. So some of the complaints that we hear with this sometimes is this is a lot of data. I have to sort through it. There's a few different ways to narrow things down. So you can narrow by azimuth. So in this case, the opening was to my west. So I can go ahead and hit the W button and it would narrow down to everything to the west and sorry about that. This is actually what it would look like, everything to the west. So the list is just a little bit shorter and then you'll see the filter that I had pulled up was the PI code. So you can see the PI code here is 324E. So in addition to my filter on the west, I can filter it by stations that have a PI code of 324E. It should only be one station. So if I hit enter, here it is. And if I hit the L button right here, this will begin my log. Now, if you're logging live, you don't have to do the date or the UTC. It will just assume that you're DXing live. If you're DXing in the past, you can type in the date. It's in the European format of the day being first, a dot the month, and then dot the year. So in this case, we were 08.07.2021, which would represent July 8th, 2021. I'm gonna mute this audio for now. So I'm gonna put the UTC time, which you can see in these time bars on the right side on SDR console, 1638. And if you had a long reception, you can. I do this sometimes, um, input the range of time where you've heard this signal. So if I'm being particular looking here on the right side, it was really coming in for the whole 10 minute period. So I'm gonna put in 1630 to 1640. Zulu time, and then I'll just put RDS here. It's going to, um, if you hit yes right here under RDS, it will automatically populate what the database uh, behind FM list assumes the RDS is based on the data that's been input by its editors. In this case, it's correct. You can see the um, both the PI information and the PS is correct. So all I have to do is hit yes. I just put RDS here since it gets logged anyway, there's no use repeating the information and I can go ahead and double check and hit submit. 
then it gets added to my logbook. So in order to see your logbook, you can go over here to the logbook pane and I'll open it up in another tab and you'll see this logbook. So this was the day of July 8th, 2021. In this case, I really hadn't reviewed this file. So you can see I did review uh, or, or log things later in the day that day, but it was several hours after. So you can see those UTC times begin, began at 1950. So everything I'm putting in here, including the log that I just entered is right here on this day's logbook. And in order to scroll through your logbook, you can drop down the select date. And I had gone all the way back to this specific date in 2021, but you could also hit all or by year and see your logbook from there. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I just wanted to show where the logbook was. So moving along, I'm gonna go ahead and move to another frequency try to find a signal fade up using that data analyzer window, which I have pulled off on another screen. Here's one. So we have 100.9 KRRY in Missouri. So I'm gonna hit 100.9. Now you'll see when I hit 100.9 here, there is an azimuth frequency applied. I'll zoom out a little bit so it doesn't look funky. You'll see 260 to 280 is the azimuth filter. It based that assumption on where my last log was. Sometimes this comes in handy. If you have multiple e-skip openings going on or a wide range of azimuths, sometimes this can be a little presumptive and it can actually accidentally filter things out. So in this case, I'm gonna PI code filter again, 3EB6, hit enter and here's that station. So I'll hit yes. And then you'll see when I go into this, it remembers July 8th, 2021, all I have to do is input the UTC. So 1634 is what we're listening to right now, as you can see on the right side, we'll just say 1635. And the RDS code is accurate already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and submit and I've logged that station. So let's move on to another one. Pick a fade up in the other window right here. So we have 103.3 of Marquette, Michigan. Now that's a little bit further north, so we'll have to see if it gets captured in the filter, which is now set at 261 through 281. Let's put in the PI code and see what happens. And see, nothing comes up. So this is the folly of this 20 degree azimuth range assumption that it has. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit all, and then you'll see it got unfiltered. This azimuth here is actually closer to 300. So it was probably a second e-skip cloud that day. So I'm gonna hit log, gonna enter in the time, 1635. And I'm gonna hit yes on RDS, the PI code's accurate. I'm gonna hit submit and move along to the next one. I have a 104.3 here. You'll see SDR console says this is from Fresno, California, which I'm in, located in uh, Massachusetts. So this is not correct, obviously. Um, this is one of the iHeart radio PI codes that begins with a one and it decodes to the wrong call letters. But you'll see scrolling here on the PI section, it says KC's new hit country. I assume KC means Kansas City. So we'll go to 104.3 and hit enter. You'll see because I logged that station in Michigan, my azimuth filter has defaulted to this 20 degrees again, which is um, now looking north and Kansas City is to my west. Or it's looking northwest. Kansas City is about due west from here, maybe 260. So I'm gonna hit all, just get rid of that and type in the PI code again, 131C. And you'll see here's my correct station. I'm gonna hit yes for the RDS. This looks to be accurate. I can't vouch for this long PI, PS, so I just delete that. Um, a little bit too much data to, to screw with if I'm gonna be logging stations quickly. So 1636 Zulu is the time with the right timestamps. I'm gonna hit submit, move on to another log. We have this 105.7, oh, that's one of my locals. Looks like a, actually an airplane flying over. Normally don't get that decoding. Um, so here's a fun one using this data analyzer. Cool thing about this data analyzer, this is actually 104.7. I have a local on this frequency, but you can see the local isn't very strong because of the position of the antenna. You can see this little yellow burst right here indicates a fade up. So I'm gonna click into this right before the fade up and we'll see if we can get an RDS decode. And this might be tricking me out. It could be my local.
Total Family Healthcare in Macon. I'm not getting an RDS decode, but let's search for that. So Total Family, what was it? Totally Family Healthcare. I'm just gonna put Total Family Macon. So it looks like Missouri. Total Family Healthcare of Macon, Missouri. So we'll just put in Macon, Missouri 104.7. And we get KRES is the station licensed to Moberly, Mississippi. Double check here. Yep. So KRES is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go to 104.7 up here at the top. The automatic azimuth filter is looking west, which is correct. And I don't have a PI code on that one. I just heard the audio. So I like to do just control F here and type KRES. And then you'll see. KRES Superstation. So I'll hit log, Moberly, Missouri. Does it have RDS? It does. It just wasn't strong enough to decode. So 1636 was the timestamp on my left hand of the screen. It's probably actually a minute before that. We'll say 1635. And then for this one, I don't have RDS, so I'm going to put in uh, details, which sometimes I even skip that. If there's RDS, I just leave the details blank. So I'm going to put uh, add for total family healthcare, Macon, Missouri. And everything else is correct. I'm going to hit submit. We'll do one more example here and I will bid you adieu. Let's see. We have a 105.5. Oh, Moberly, Missouri as well. So we'll go 105.5. My azimuth filter is 260 to 280, which we know is correct because this is literally from the same town. KZZT is my station. I could again just go KZZT and my control F and it will find the call sign there or I'll just use a PI filter again, go 54A1, hit enter, you get KZZT, Oberly, Missouri, hit yes. And this, uh, this looks pretty accurate. So we'll go 1631 on the time, as you can see on the timestamps right there, hit submit. And that's all I'm going to do for this demonstration. Let me know if this is helpful and I'll do more of these videos, maybe even an introductory series to SDR console and how I have things set up. So look at the logbook again, we'll refresh it. We should be able to see the one, two, three, four, five, six stations that we logged during this session, which are right here at the top. And then a cool tip, you can hit visual logbook right here and if you click it from this viewpoint, it will automatically filter to whatever you were logging during that time. So um, you can see later in the day, I mentioned those logs that happened later in that day. I was um, There was an opening up to my northeast. I'm located here in Massachusetts and you can see all these end stations that I logged. You can kind of click on them and see what, what they are on the map. This day, by the way, had some double hop to Iceland that was up here, which was um, a really nice treat and the reason why I remember this day, Ju July 8th of 2021. But you can see all the stations that I just logged. You can see, I mean, on the arguing for this azimuth filter in a 20 degree range, this particular actually looks like two e-skip openings. You know, one of them was clustered very tightly and all these pretty much had the same azimuth. So in five of the six logs, that azimuth filter would have come in handy to narrowing results if you were DXing live. Um, and in this one case up here with that random station in Michigan that was coming in, you know, that, that azimuth filter um, was outside of the 20 degree range. So hopefully that helps with a little bit of basics on quickly going through a logging session of FMDX using FM list and SDR console. Thanks for watching.